Hello, welcome on stage here. And we are glad that you're all here today to discover how we can make your daily life as a machine builder faster and easier. And this is why we are very pleased to talk to Jay, to you, and to introduce you to the topic of virtual commissioning for machine builders. So, let's get started. When Daniel and I are visiting our customers, we see that the demands on machines, and like this also, the demands on machine building are increasing. Are any machine builders here today? Please raise your hand. Somebody working for a machine builder? Nobody. Okay, so we will tell you something now about the hard life of a machine builder. Because there are some challenges in the daily life of a machine builder, especially when it comes to the engineering and commissioning of a machine. So one challenge is to guarantee a shorter time to market. There's great savings potential here, especially when it comes to the reduction of engineering and development times. But also saving costs might be a very important challenge for you. Because the development costs can rise during your development process, usually exponentially. And last but not least, you have to minimize and control your risks. Because unforeseen problems during the real commissioning can endanger your planning security of your development process. But the question is, What are the effects of these challenges? Okay, let's assume we have to develop this machine. In the traditional development process, each development step is proceeded serially. So this means, first of all, you define the mechanical concept of a machine. Afterwards, you start with the mechanical construction. This one is then followed by the electrical design, And after the electrical sign is finished, then you can start with the automation engineering. Or to say it in other words, each development step is dependent from the previous one. If any unexpected errors should occur, then the whole process is delayed. In addition, it's not before the real commissioning that you see if a machine is really running error-free or not. And if in this late phase of the development process, any adaptions should be required. It's getting really expensive, and again, the time of production is delayed. Okay, so um, I think the requirements are clear. We have to yes. build this machine, and we have 30 seconds, and I would say, okay, Daniel, let's go. Let's go. Okay, so this was hard work. Seems like machine builders have really a hard day. So um, let's see if we succeeded. Did we made to build our machine? Well, obviously, you see something is not working properly. The machine doesn't look functional at all. Damage occurs. The time until the customer wants to start production is getting shorter. And of course, our unplanned costs are rising. So not a good situation. No, really not the best situation at all. Better would be if we are able to test our machine before the real commissioning and in a perfect world without having to leave the office a single time. And this is why we will turn your daily development process upside down now, or better, in the virtual space, with our solutions for virtual commissioning of machines. The core here is a digital copy of our machine, the so-called digital twin. In our case, we realized the digital twin with a software bundle called Sematic Machine Simulator. We already have customers who are using our concepts for virtual commissioning. One of them is the machine builder Tronrö. He is from Norway. And he is using virtual commissioning of Siemens. And by this, he was able to reduce his commissioning times by 25%. And what should we say? He is really, really happy. 
virtual commissioning for us means that we can actually test a lot of things in a virtual environment before we need to build the hardware. We realized virtual commissioning with the NX tool and the Mechatronic Concept Designer and the PLC SIM Advanced and together with the TI port. The main advantages we received on this machine with virtual commissioning is especially on the kinematics setup of this machine. Because of having two kinematic systems work in one charge space, we could test out the complete system in a virtual environment. And uh, of course we had some uh, virtual crashes, which uh, saved us a lot of money. Virtual commissioning with the digital twin does not only make Dronry happy, it has many advantages. On the left side you see the virtual image of a machine. On this basis the functionality is tested and then the real machine is built. So it works error-free the first time. The virtual environment also enables that the automation department can work in parallel to the engineering department, which ensures a shorter time to market. That is a big advantage of digitalization in machine building. But the question is, how is such a digital twin actually being created? Like for the real machine, our digital twin of the machine consists of three components. First of all, we need to transfer the mechanical behavior of our machine into the virtual world. Therefore, we use a so-called physical and kinematic model. In a second step, we also have active components in our machines, like for example drives or valves. And we also have to, yeah, transfer this behavior of these active components into our virtual world. And this is what we are doing in the so-called electrical and behavior model. Yes, and last but not least, we also want to control our digital twin. And in the best world or the best situation would be to do this with the original controller program. And therefore, we need a so-called automation model. OK, so now we have our digital twin completed. And the big question is now, which software packages to use in order to realize now those three packages? So in Annex, the Mechatronics Concept Designer, we model the mechanics of a machine, including its physical and kinematic properties. The basis for our machine model is 3AD data, which is enriched with physical properties, for example, a mass. Therefore, the model follows now kinematic principles, such as gravity. In the end, we are getting a virtual image of our machine which is moving in a similar way and can be controlled in a similar way like our real machine later. That enables that you can test different design alternatives and validate them. OK, so remember in the second step, we need a behavior model of our machine. The behavior model, yeah, contains the behavior of active components, like, for example, drives or other periphery systems. In our case, we are using the simulation software SIMIT to realize the behavior model. In SIMIT, we can virtually map all relevant active processes. In a simple case, this could be, for example, the communication behavior of a drive via the profit drive telegram. But also complex cases, like, for example, the um, pressure behavior of a hydraulic system can be simulated with SIMIT. To say it in other words, with SIMIT, we bring our machine to life. If we want to control now our machine, we use the virtual controller PLC SIM Advanced. With PLC SIM Advanced, we can emulate the functionality of a SIMATIC S7-1500, including its original STAB-7 controller code. In other words, the benefit is we do not need any simulation-specific adjustments. That gives us a chance to put our machine into virtual operation and test and check all processes like we want to. The advantages 
of this realistic testing process that we can validate the controller functionality at an early stage of the development process and we can find and solve problems early. Okay, and that's it. Like this, we have our digital twin completed. It consists of NXMCD, SIMIT, and PLC SIM Advanced. With this digital twin, we are now able to test the machine before the real commissioning and do a virtual commissioning. And the best is that we can reuse the data here exactly um, without any changes to realize the real machine. So then I would say it's time for a second try. Let's see if our machine is working now. OK, so what is, what is the situation? Is it looking good? Yes, OK, so I think this time we made it. Yeah, yeah um, The machine, thanks to our testing in advance with virtual commissioning concepts, our machine is now running without any errors. Thanks to the integrated interfaces of the used software packages, the additional effort for you to create the digital twin is small. But the advantages on the other side are enormous. The first advantage is that virtual commissioning puts you into a position to work on the development steps of design, electrical planning, and automation in parallel, which enables you to reach a shorter time to market. You are also able to save costs because the error costs are less because errors are detected in a much earlier phase of the development due to the simulation. And you can also minimize risks because the simulation enables you to achieve a higher planning security and therefore your risks for the real commissioning is very low. Yes, and uh, this is how machine building is working in the era of digitalization. If you now wonder how virtual commissioning also works for your development processes, um, just visit us in our virtual commissioning area right here at the booth. But even if you're not a machine builder and maybe based in process automation or you're planning and building robot cells, we and our colleagues over there welcome every one of you and discuss with you your individual virtual commissioning solution. Thank you for your attention. And see you soon in the virtual space. <laughs>